The following is a presentation of Tomorrow's World. If I ruled the world, every day would be the first day of spring. Every heart would have a new song to sing, and we'd sing of the joy every morning would bring. These are some of the words from the 1963 musical Pickwick, first popularized by Sir Harry Seacombe and later by Tony Bennett. Who hasn't dreamed of a better world? And who hasn't considered that it would be a better world if only, yes, if only I, meaning you, were in charge? What kind of place would it be? Would every day truly be like the first day of spring? Would every heart have a new song to sing? Probably not, but I think most of us would want a world without war, a world without poverty, a world based on fair standards where everyone lives at peace with his neighbor and where there is prosperity for all. This seems to be the kind of world most of us desire, but a world that escapes our desire. Why? What's wrong with us that we can't have a harmonious world? is the answer that we could have such a place if only you had the power to bring it about? On today's program, I'm going to show you that such a world is not only possible, but is a sure thing, and that you can have a part in bringing it about. Now, you might be thinking right now that this fellow needs psychological help for suggesting this, but don't be too sure. Sometimes truth is stranger than fiction. I'll be right back to show you how a better world is coming and how you can have a part in bringing it about. So stay tuned. Welcome to Tomorrow's World, where today I'm going to show you how you can change the world. And I'm not talking about joining a club to build houses or feed the homeless. As commendable as that may be, I'm talking about how you can have a part in actually solving the problems of homelessness, hunger, and violence. Since Sir Harry Seacombe first appeared in Pickwick, the world has changed, but not for the better. His view of the world was one of beauty and harmony. But 33 years later, rap artist Nas came out with a very different version of If I Ruled the World. Note the large divide between the two versions. First, the Seacom version. If I ruled the world, every man would say the world was his friend. There'd be happiness that no man could end. Every head would be held up high. There'd be sunshine in everyone's sky if the day ever dawned when I ruled the world. As unrealistic as that may appear, the promise of Pickwick is a beautiful and peaceful place with sunshine and happiness. Now for the 1996 Nas rap version. Imagine smoking weed in the streets without cops harassing. Imagine going to court with no trial. Lifestyle cruising blue behind my waters. No welfare supporters more conscious of the way we raise our daughters. Days are shorter, nights are colder. Colder indeed. No longer sunshine and smiles, but the right to stay stoned with no consequences. Have you ever wondered why our current world is in such a mess? The answer may surprise you. Many people believe in clairvoyance and other forms of communication with a spirit realm. Yet at the same time, they deny the existence of God and what the Bible says about a very real spirit world. Yes, according to the Bible, there is a spirit world, and not all of it is good. To put it plainly, there is a real devil, also known as Satan. And here is something that will shock most people. He is the God of this world. Don't take my word for it. Prove it for yourself. Look around you. What do you see? 
Is it not a dysfunctional world filled with hatred, cruelty, violence, and heartache? Consider the wars, the divorce rates, and the destruction of all godly values. Women are raped. Children are abused. Crime is rampant. There is always someone out to scam you, and it's a world given over to sexual immorality and betrayal. The book of Revelation in chapter 12 and verse 9 makes this revealing statement. So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Here we are told that there is a powerful angelic being who deceives the whole world. Most think the devil is no more than a myth. We've all seen the cartoon figures of a man-like figure in a red jumpsuit with horns on his head, a tail that ends in an arrowhead, and a pitchfork in his hand. We often see him in competition with a halo-crowned angel. For most, this picture merely symbolizes good and evil but certainly not real figures. The Bible reveals that there is not only a real devil, but that he has a kingdom made up of fallen spirits. But if there is such a being, how is it that he is able to deceive the whole world? The Apostle John in 1 John 5 verse 19 tells us, We know that we are of God, and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. And the Apostle Paul explains in detail how he works. Ephesians 2, verses 1 and 2. And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. In other words, there is an evil spirit influence that is orchestrating the course or direction of our world, and he does it, so to speak, through the air. For example, right now you have all kinds of invisible signals swirling about you, but unless you have a receiver such as a radio or television, you're completely unaware of them. Satan broadcasts not into a radio, but into our brains and moods, attitudes, and thoughts. Not only does he influence our individual thinking, but he influences our collective thinking through the kind of negative entertainment and program we are exposed to. The statement, the devil made me do it, is not as comical as it's intended to be. When you consider the havoc he is bringing in our world, he is not to be taken lightly. He is no cartoon figure. The Bible reveals far more about this spirit influence and how he directs our current world. But just as importantly, it explains how you can have a part in changing its destructive course. Our Tomorrow's World Bible Study course will help you in your study of the Bible. This Bible study course reveals the meaning behind today's headlines and gives the good news of tomorrow's world. And it's available to you absolutely free of charge. It consists of 24 lessons, and we'll send you the first four lessons upon your request. The Bible is an up-to-date and timely book. In fact, the first lesson is titled, The Bible, A Book for Today. You'll learn from your own Bible amazing truths that have been totally overlooked or even rejected by many religious teachers. Lesson two is, Are We Living in the Last Days? Lesson three is, Can You Understand Bible Prophecy? And lesson four is entitled, Revealed, the Master Key to Bible Prophecy. You need this free Bible study course. There's no cost or obligation. Just phone, click, or write, and we'll send you the first four lessons. Or you can take the Tomorrow's World Bible study course online at tomorrowsworld.org. Today's offer is yours absolutely free, no cost, no obligation. Call now, 1-800-236-0531. Or write to us at the address on your screen. Or visit us online at tomorrowsworld.org. With this offer, you will also receive your free subscription to Tomorrow's World magazine. 
full of timely articles and unique insights on today's important issues. And be sure to go to tomorrowsworld.org forward slash digital. Have a digital subscription sent right to your email inbox faster than postal mail. Visit us online now. We think it's difficult to believe in something we can't see, but is it really? Don't we do it all the time? We can't see electricity, but we see its effect as it heats up filaments under glass to lighten our nights. It runs our motors that propel our boats and cars. With it, we can cut our lawns, trim our beards, or brush our teeth. We often think we are seeing electricity during a violent storm, but in reality, we only see its effects. So while we can't see electricity, we know it exists. So it's not a good argument to reject something because you can't see it. God can be seen by His workmanship around us. We see it in a soaring bird or a fluttering butterfly, and in an antelope as it runs across the plain, or in the gracefulness of a cat. But we also see Satan's handiwork in people killing people, children being abused, and scam artists taking advantage of the elderly. His influence is everywhere, and it's not good. Jesus told the carnally-minded religious leaders of His day that they were under the influence of the evil one, and as a result they were liars and worse. John 8, verse 44, You are of your father the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth, because there is no truth in him, for he is a liar and the father of it. Sadly, it's not only the Pharisees of Jesus' day that are being influenced by this evil spirit power. As we read earlier, the whole world is under His sway. Jesus makes it abundantly clear who the ruler of the world is. On the night before He was crucified, He told His disciples, I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming, and He has nothing in Me. The Apostle Paul gives this revealing truth in his second letter to the Church of God at Corinth. Chapter 4, beginning verse 3. But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded. It is not irrational on our part to ask, if the God of creation is greater than Satan, why is Satan allowed to direct man's course and cause so much suffering and hardship in the world? Why doesn't God step in and stop the madness? The answer is quite simple. Instead of blaming God, we need to look in the mirror. It is man that has rejected God. We don't want God telling us what to do. We don't want to be told we can't use recreational drugs or engage in sexual activities outside of marriage. We want to choose our own forms of government and our way to worship God. Is this not the choice our first parents made and the choice we've been taking ever since? People don't want to hear the truth. As soon as you open the Bible, people get nervous, shuffle their feet, change the subject, or simply tune out. But since you're still with me, let's go back to the beginning. When God put the first man and woman in a beautiful garden, He placed two special trees there. One symbolized man choosing to live God's way that would lead to blessings and life. The other symbolized man rejecting God and determining for himself what is right and wrong. And the end result? They were kicked out of the garden and the way to the tree of life was blocked. In effect, God was saying, Okay, you think you know better. You think doing it your own way works better, go to it. Have it your own way, but don't come crying to me when it doesn't work. Sadly, mankind is not ready to give up this arrangement. Frank Sinatra put it about as well as one can when he sang triumphantly, I did it my way. Notice the words. And now the end is near, and so I face the final curtain. My friend, I'll say it clear, I'll state my case, of which I am certain. 
I've lived a life that's full. I've traveled each and every highway. And more, much more than this, I did it my way. Regrets? I've had a few. I did what I had to do. I planned each charted course. And may I say, not in a shy way, oh no, oh no, not me, I did it my way. For what is a man, what has he got? If not himself, then he has not. To say the things he truly feels, and not the words of one who kneels. The record shows I took the blows and did it my way. Yes, it was my way. How accurate. Man wants to do it his own way, but that's an illusion. What he doesn't realize is that there is a spirit being playing him like a fiddle. But what does all this have to do with you ruling the world? I'll give you the answer in a moment. But if you want to understand the purpose of life, what the future holds for mankind, and how you can someday have a part in ruling this world, you need to order our absolutely free Tomorrow's World Bible Study course. All you have to do is phone, write, or click to sign up for this life-changing course. It's really that easy. We will send you the first four lessons right away, and when you finish them, all you have to do is let us know, and we'll send you the next set of four, absolutely free of charge. You need this course, so call, click, or write for your copy of the Tomorrow's World Bible Study course. Or if you prefer, you can take it online at tomorrowsworld.org. Today's offer is yours absolutely free, no cost, no obligation. Call now, 1-800-236-0531. Or write to us at the address on your screen. Or visit us online at tomorrowsworld.org. With this offer, you will also receive your free subscription to Tomorrow's World magazine, full of timely articles and unique insights on today's important issues. And be sure to go to tomorrowsworld.org forward slash digital. Have a digital subscription sent right to your email inbox faster than postal mail. Visit us online now. Do you realize that the gospel Jesus brought has to do with ruling the world and the part that you can have in it? The good news he preached for three and a half years prior to his death and resurrection involved the kingdom of God. God's plan is for those who obey him now to have a part in ruling when Christ returns. He is going to return to set up a literal kingdom on earth as described in the book of Daniel, the second chapter, and verse 44. And in the days of these kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. Daniel described in advance four world ruling empires, beginning with the great Chaldean Empire of Nebuchadnezzar, and continuing all the way down through history, including seven restorations of the Roman Empire, with one yet to come. We see the genesis of this final Roman Empire in Europe today. Watch and see, and remember you heard it on this program how ten rulers will give their power over to a charismatic leader who will step in to solve the confusion taking place. But instead, this leader will take the world in a very bad direction. In the end, God will have to save man from his insanity and will set up a very different kind of government. Now notice who it is that is going to rule with God when that kingdom is set up. Chapter 7, verse 27. Then the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdoms under the whole heaven shall be given to the people, the saints of the Most High. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey Him. Jesus gives us more details about what the servants of God will be doing in that kingdom. In the parable of the nobleman found in Luke, the 19th chapter, we read how the nobleman, representing Christ, goes into a far country after giving each of his servants a unit of money, representing his spirit. 
Each servant is to do business until he returns, when he will give out rewards according to each one's work. Luke, the 19th chapter, beginning in verse 16. Then came the first, saying, Master, your mina has earned ten minas. And he said to him, Well done, good servant, because you are faithful in a very little, have authority over ten cities. And the second came, saying, Master, your mina has earned five minas. Likewise, he said to him, You also be over five cities. We might dismiss this parable as being figurative if it weren't for numerous other passages that say directly that those resurrected when Christ returns are destined to rule. Notice Revelation, the fifth chapter, and verses 9 and 10. And they sang a new song, saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals. For you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation, and have made us kings and priests to our God, and we shall reign on the earth. Bob was one of my closest friends in high school, but after graduation we went different directions. A few years later we were both in town and got together to catch up. Bob had drifted from one thing to another and was still trying to figure out what to do with his life. There were two comments he made that burned in my mind. The first was that he feared waking up at age 40, still not knowing what to do. And sadly, that became a reality. But he made another statement toward the end of our meeting that was even more tragic. He said, you know, if I could do anything I wanted to do, I would like to build cities. In other words, be a city planner. Now that may not sound like much to you, but it stunned me for this reason. Bob once understood the subject of today's program. He understood the true gospel message that Christ brought, that He is calling individuals today to be rulers in His kingdom upon His return. But Bob had drifted from God's way and had forgotten the message Christ brought to the world. God had once called him to do the very thing he dreamed of, and I might add, on a far grander scale. But this program is for you. How many Bobs are watching this program who are allowing the greatest opportunity ever offered to a human being to pass them by? Jesus tells us in Matthew, the seventh chapter, verses 13 and 14, Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and there are many who go in by it, because narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. In the parable of the sower, he describes how a sower scattered seed which fell on four different areas. Some fell by the wayside, some on rocky ground, some among weeds, and some on good soil. Here's how he explained it in the parable Matthew, the 13th chapter, and verse 19. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, then the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is he who receives seed by the wayside. That's the first category, and some of you watching this program fit into it. The second is found in the next two verses. But he who received the seed on stony places this is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures only for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, immediately he stumbles. Could that be you? Do you have enough conviction and depth of character to do what is right, no matter what others think? The third group is found in verse 22. Now he who receives seed among the thorns is he who hears the word, and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he becomes unfruitful. Do everyday distractions and pleasures of life cause you to lose your focus? Do you forget what is important, and will you lose out on the great reward to which you may be called? Then there's a fourth group found in verse 23. But he who receives seed on the good ground is he who hears the word and understands it, 
who indeed bears fruit and produces, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. A few of you will make up this group of people and will have the opportunity to do exactly what my dear friend Bob hoped to do, plan, build, and rule cities. Bible prophecy shows that prior to Christ's return, this world is going to experience a time of trouble such as it has never seen. Huge percentages of the world's population will die, and the destruction that will take place will make the worst disaster movie look tame in comparison. It is in this context that we read of Christ's return to stop the madness and restore the earth and its cities. Notice this wonderful future promise given to those precious few who during this lifetime put God first in their lives. Isaiah 58, verse 12. Those from among you shall build the old waste places. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations, and you shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to dwell in. Yes, the true gospel that Jesus brought was one of rulership. He told His apostles in Matthew the 19th chapter and verse 28, Assuredly I say to you, then in the regeneration when the Son of Man sits on the throne of His glory, you who have followed Me will also sit on twelve thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And as we saw earlier, we too can have positions of rulership over cities. So maybe you can't rule the whole world, but you can rule some of its cities. This is the positive message that Jesus brought to mankind. How few it is who see the opportunity being offered, and how fewer still seize that opportunity that is now knocking at their doors. So what about you who are sitting there watching this program? Do you understand how awesome this opportunity is? And will you seize that opportunity to be a part of ruling the world? If you'd like to learn more about the most amazing book ever written, be sure to request your free copy of the Tomorrow's World Bible Study course. There are no long forms to fill out. All you have to do is call, click, or write to let us know that you want this course. It can change your life forever. Don't forget we will also send you our free bi-monthly magazine, Tomorrow's World, and we'll do it digitally or in hard copy. And be sure to come back next week when Richard Ames, Wallace Smith, and I will continue to share with you the teachings of Jesus Christ, the hope of the coming Kingdom of God, and the exciting end-time prophecies from the Bible. We'll see you right here at the same time. To take advantage of today's free offer or view today's program now or anytime, go to tomorrowsworld.org. Find us on Facebook, watch us on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter. The preceding program is produced by the Living Church of God.